very excited to bring this next gentleman on board. And you're going to hear much more about him right here on Off the Hook Sports. It is T. Stock Scott Jones. And Mr. Jones, counselor, how are you, sir? I'll tell you, man, I'm up here in the great outdoors in Illinois doing a little bit of hunting. But you know what? I'm listening to you guys and I'm learning lots of good stuff. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of a combination of great stuff. There you go. If you need somebody to carry your bags wherever you are, I'm 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 that guy. You'd have to teach me to shoot, but um. <laughs> well, you know that's why they call it hunting instead of shooting. You know what I mean? So I mean, uh, <laughs> I, as they say, even a blind squirrel finds a few nuts. So folks like me get to come up here and have a good time and uh, just relax a little bit. Yeah, well, I, th I think you're you're downplaying the amount of success you have. You you do quite well, and uh, certainly. You need to remember BanksJones.com, BanksJones.com, aggressive Knoxville criminal defense and personal injury lawyers fighting for your future. I've been very fortunate enough to learn more about T. Scott Jones, and that is how he's willing to go to trial. Most aren't and how he will fight for you. I had a, uh, a medical issue that nobody would take. I wish I would have known T. Scott Jones then, uh, banksjones.com, because uh, medical malpractice is one of the toughest things, and he'll he'll go for that as well. So he is your Tennessee trial lawyer. I want to talk about this Jim Harbaugh thing, if we can, uh, Counselor, and that is I watched the press conference for that thing last night, and I'm just curious as to the laws. So if, if Tennessee or the SEC says Josh Heupel, for whatever reason – can't coach that weekend, what legal recourse does he have? Because that's what Jim Harbaugh is trying to do, and it's a little bit bizarre. You know, I, and I agree, and he keeps characterizing it in the terms of due process. And we hear that term due process, and we think about governmental actors, because ordinarily when we're dealing with the due process clause of the 14th Amendment, you know, we've got the amendments to the U.S. Constitution, and it's basically on three factors. That is, you have to have notice of actions being taken against you. Then you also have to have an opportunity to be heard. So it's not just done unilaterally and an impartial tribunal. But here we don't have government actors. We have a situation where Michigan, you know, for uh, whatever reason, has chosen to uh, be a member of the uh, conference. And when they've chosen to be a member of the Big Ten, uh, then they have subjected uh, their university and obviously the actors within their university, like Coach Harbaugh, to the uh, rules and edicts, so to speak, of the conference. So. I don't know. I mean, you get into this sort of blurring. I mean, clearly the Big Ten's not a governmental actor, and uh, they have voluntarily subjected themselves to Big Ten, if you will, jurisdiction. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it presents an interesting uh, situation and sort of a, could be an opening of Pandora's box. Yeah, so um, I wanted to ask uh, on that matter, I think last week we knew that the summary ruling was going – well, it's going to be in Michigan. Right. And so how do you sit there and allow for with these college football rulings? And you had one last week with the Pac-12 where it was a judge who was like 30 minutes away from Washington State ruled in favor of Washington State and Oregon State on the Pac-12. Shouldn't there be some sort of recusal process for in a certain situation where judges in states representing areas that these same colleges represent ruling on these colleges when there is still kind of a locational bias between Michigan and Ohio State or wherever, whatever you want to name it? Well, I agree with you. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, it's the appearance of impropriety, whether or not there is impropriety or not. That's generally from a legal standpoint, both members of the judiciary and members of the bar. You know, we're not supposed to be in a situation where is there there is an appearance of impropriety. And here uh, I had did a little bit of reading, I guess, over the past couple of days. And the if you will, the jurist, the individual that's going to hear the matter is a professor, I believe, at the University of Michigan Law School. So, you know, I can't imagine that, uh, you know, he doesn't have a little bit of blue running in his blood. I mean, you know, wow. I, 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 you talk about impropriety, and I mean, I'm not demeaning the man's, uh, you know, character, uh, but it'd be awful hard to be on that campus working for a university system every day and then, you know, being tasked with hearing it. I, I, I don't think that that's necessarily uh the the best course of practice is it outside the realm of possibility 
that a player and like Jalen McCullough last year was was suspended for very a very questionable thing. I mean, a, a drunken idiot walked in his uh, girlfriend's apartment and then he walked out and punched him. And that's probably what would happen at my house, to be real honest with you. But oh, uh, could you foresee a point now that players have some NIL money where they say, you can't suspend me. I'm going to sue you. Yeah, I think it goes to where does it stop? I mean, you know, everybody, obviously, you know, if you're a big Michigan fan, you're like, oh, yeah, let's go take this step. We're going to put Coach Harbaugh back on the sidelines. But then, you know, you were exactly right in that it's going to go to players. It's going to go to assistant coaches. I mean, where does it end? I mean, you know, uh, one of the team managers doesn't get allowed to do something. I mean, I, I, I think that the court system, so to speak, is going to be very hesitant to get involved in that type of a situation because of the fact that it's just a slippery slope. Everybody's going to start filing. And, I, you know, I, 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 I think they chose to be in that conference and they chose to subject themselves to that. And I wouldn't at all be surprised if it was more of a sort of beat your chest type thing saying, hey, we're going to file it, save face, so to speak, as opposed to actually expecting a, uh, a successful or a substantive ruling. I think you're right. And his press conference was Michigan's galvanized. It felt like a beating of your chest type of uh, press conference. Uh, again, T. Scott Jones, nice enough to join us. Go to banksjones.com, Tennessee's trial lawyer, play to win, whether we're talking about personal injury, uh, play to win, catastrophic injury, auto and truck crashes, criminal defense, DUI defense, you need to remember that name, T. Scott Jones, banksjones.com. And if, if I may ask you, um, Counselor, what, what makes you different than uh, some of the uh, other attorneys that are out there? And I, I think I know the answer. You, you're not afraid to go to trial. No, and I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things, the way that I was raised up by Bill Banks, God rest his soul, my deceased partner, you know, 35 years ago when I started clerking for him, uh, 11 days out of law school, I tried my first jury trial. I mean, you know, it was sort of the, whether or not it was a appropriate way to do it or not, you know, you were expected to jump in the deep end and, you know, you're either going to swim or you're going to drown. And, uh, you know, thankfully I, I learned uh, sort of how to swim. And I look at it this way now as a more seasoned uh, practitioner, uh, I perhaps win some cases that I might ought to lost. And, you know, early on in my career, I might have lost a few that I might have ought to won. But somewhere in the, the middle, justice kind of gets sorted out. Yeah. Great stuff, as always. How, how do you feel about the Georgia game? You know what? I, I, I am a Tennessee fan, uh, you know, uh, through and through. And obviously, uh, you know, I've got a lot of faith in my volunteers. And, you know, Georgia's ripe for, uh, you know, the picking, I guess, so to speak. I mean, you read your press clippings uh, too much and uh, listen to uh, how everybody tells you the greatest thing since sliced bread. Sometimes you come in here and, I mean, uh, you get the wheels knocked off your cart. So, you know, I, I hope Tennessee is the one to uh, upset our uh, brothers from uh, down uh, below in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you, Counselor. Have a very safe trip, and thank you for all you do. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, guys.